All right, let's go ahead and create our application. Before I do that, I want to show you, I changed this window over here. I have my Solution Explorer and my Properties window. I want them to be the same for me as they are for you. Um, you can change the layout of your windows a lot. And I'm going to ask early on, especially, that you don't do a lot of changes to the layout. Because if you call me over to help you, um, I don't want to have to look all over to figure out where you hid your Solution Explorer or where you hid your properties or where your toolboxes are. Um, so the question is, how do we get this back? Well, I already showed you that for the Solution Explorer, I can do this and I can hit that box there and that puts the Solution Explorer back where I had it in the Properties window. I can do the same thing probably. Um, there you go. But what if you can't figure out where they all went? Okay, Up here on the Window menu, okay, you can just hit Reset Window Layout. Are you sure you want to restore the default window layout for the environment? Yes. And it takes us back to just how it came out of the box. The only thing I will say is that I like to pin my toolbox. Um, for now. For now. We have big monitors. If you have a small monitor, getting those windows out of the way can really help you. But we have big monitors, so you don't need to worry about that. All right, let's create an application. The first thing I am going to do is come over here to my button tool in the toolbox. I'm going to click it and I'm going to drag it onto my screen. Excuse me. All right. So a good habit to get into, a very good habit to get into, is once you drag a control on the screen, you should have a plan for this. Okay. So you should know what this button is for. But let's come over here. I'm going to rename this instead of calling it button one. I'm going to call it um, BTN, short for button, hello world. That's the name of my button. So in code, if I want to talk about this button, I will use that name. It did not change what's displayed on the button. To change that, we need to scroll down and go to its text, excuse me, I clicked off of my button, and so be careful of that, I clicked onto my form and I scrolled down to the text and then I was surprised that it said hello world already. You need to be selected on your button, scroll down to its text field, and I'm going to change it from button 1. And I'm going to cha change the text to say hello. Okay. So now my button says say hello. When somebody clicks that, our, our form is going to say hello. Notice I drug, I can, when I click my form, I can drag the corners. I'm changing the size of my form here. I don't need a big giant form for this. So there's my smaller form with my uh, button on it that says say hello. It's called button hello world. Let's put on a, let's do a label. I'm going to pull a label on here. And by default, our label says label. Now, we're going to look at some other properties for labels here because labels, if I come down here and change the text for the label, This is what is displayed. Notice my label size, you saw it change. And it changes to hold the information that I put on it. Okay. I don't necessarily want that to happen, but out of the box, that's, that's what it does. And I don't actually want anything to be displayed on my label. Now I can't hardly see my label. How do I select it? So I can draw a square around it, and there it is. It got really tiny. But I can also come over here and use this drop down, and there's label one's properties, and that selects it automatically. Border style, I'm going to change this to a fixed single border style. And then 
auto size, which is what the, the property is set to true. So that's a Boolean property. I'm going to change it to false. I don't want this to be auto sized. So now I have a line around my label. Okay. And notice when I drag my button, now it lines up with the label, puts a little blue line there. That lets me know, hey, they're all lined up. And I'll adjust my form a little bit to make it look nice. I actually want, um, oops, I'll show you that in a second. I want to move them both up, so I drew a box around them. So spend some time to make your forms look nice. So this text box, I violated my own rule in that I didn't rename it, excuse me, this label. I'm going to rename it label and I'm going to call it display. So I'm using this label to display, let's call it display info. Label display info. Okay, great. I haven't written any code yet, right? So we have a label in here. It's called label display info. It doesn't say anything right now. We have a, a button on, that says on the button, it says say hello. The button's called button hello world. How do I write code to make something happen? Right? I'm going to double click on my control that I want to write code for. Now, clicking on a button when a user clicks on it, that's called an event. Okay. And an event requires us to write a special method called an event handler. It handles the event. In the event that somebody clicks this button, here's the code I want to run. All I need to do is double click the control and you can see here that it generated a method for me called button hello world. Remember that's the name of my button and it put underscore click after it. So anything I put in this method between the two braces of this method, uh, any code that I put in there will run automatically when somebody clicks that button. Okay. So it has a couple parameters. We can pass arguments into those parameters. The system passes them in by default, and we'll talk about how to use them later. But basically what you need to know is double click the button. It will generate this method stub, this little method that doesn't do anything right now. Uh, if I run my program, if you look, I have the code editor here and I have the designer here. I can go back and forth between them now. Um, it doesn't matter which one I'm on. If I hit start, it's going to launch form one because remember that main method um, automatically launches form one. If we rename that form, it would launch whatever form we renamed it to. Um, here's my button. I can click on it. Doesn't do anything because we haven't put any code in here yet. Okay. So there's the button. Our user can click on it. So let's do some code in here. When somebody clicks that button, what do I want to do? Well, I want to take this label and I want to change its text property. Okay, so to do that, I need the name of the label and I can use dotted notation. So, what was the name of my label? What if you don't remember? I'm going to, because of the way I named it, and we'll talk about that notation a little bit later, I'm going to type LBL and it shows me everything that starts with LBL here. Label display info. That was the name of my button. Okay, so it's kind of handy to use those three digit abbreviations. It's actually called Hungarian notation. And uh, we don't generally use it with C sharp. Uh, it's used more often probably with Visual Basic and maybe in some other languages, but we're going to use it for a few weeks just so you get used to seeing it and know what it is when you encounter it. So label display info. Okay, so it does that for me. If I hit the dot, it shows me all the properties that are available. Properties and methods. Methods that I can run, properties I can access for label display info. There's a ton of them. But we said we're worried about the text field, right? So there's the text. Okay, and I can just type it if I want. Label info dot 
text. Okay. Notice as I type it, it's trying to it's doing autocomplete for me. So if I get the T E in in its text, I can hit the tab key and it fills it in. Label info dot text equals I am going to change that text field to say hello world and that's a string. Okay. An exclamation point to make it more exciting. And just like in Java, everything ends with a semicolon. Okay. So the name of the object dot and the property we're going to access. Okay. We take this string and assign it to this property of this control. That's what happens when somebody clicks the button, hello world. Let's go back. Or actually, we don't need to go back. Let's just start and run our program. And when we click say hello, it changes the text in that box to say hello world. Okay, so it set that text property to hello world. And if I click the box again, it just keeps setting it back to hello world. So we don't see any changes. Um, I'm not sure I like the formatting of that because it's kind of stuck at the top. Uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about labels and things later, but you've created your first application. Uh, one last thing that I want to talk about is there's this method here, form one load. How did we get that? I accidentally clicked, double clicked on my, remember we double clicked on say hello and that generated the click event for our button. At some point I accidentally double clicked on the form and you will too. And it generated this form one load. It's not a click event, it's a load event. And we can put code in there. We'll talk about its use later. But I didn't really want that method in there. Now there's a problem though. If I delete this, if I just delete the, the code, it doesn't delete the actual uh, behind the scenes things um, that happen to generate uh, the event. All right. So in order to fix that, we have to do something a little different. Back on our form designer, I can come over here. Uh, I've got the form selected. I come over here, this little lightning bolt, and it shows me different events. And I can see load event. It has form one load. I'm just going to delete that. Okay. And I go back to my code, and you can see that that's gone. So that is the proper way. If you accidentally create a method that you don't need, on the code for your form, you need to go back to your designer, click on the item that has the event associated with it, use the little lightning bolt, find the setting, and delete it. Um, then you can go back here to see properties again. So this shows me events, that shows me the properties.